we're announcing that the Mac is transitioning. to our own Apple Silicon. Hello everyone, this is Hugo. Uh, sometime around last month, uh, Apple held their annual WWDC event. Um, well, alongside them introducing the new version of Mac OS, uh, named Big Sur, um, they also announced that they would uh, begin the transition from Intel processors to their in-house ARM processors. Um, this process seems like it's going to be similar to Apple's earlier processor transition from over a decade before um, when they transitioned from PowerPC processors to Intel processors. Indeed, uh, many aspects from the PowerPC to Intel transition appears with the Intel to ARM transition, including the ability to run most Intel apps on ARM Macs and vice versa. Um, now it's unclear um, as to exactly when this transition will be completed and how long Intel Macs will be supported thereafter. Um, however, with all that said, uh, is it wise to continue to buy Intel Macs as of mid-2020? The answer to that is yes, obviously. Um, there are plenty of Intel Macs to go around, although what Intel Mac you should get really depends on what your girl and using it is. Um, if you want the greatest uh, and freshest Mac experience than any post-2013 model will do um, since they will all be able to run Mac OS Big Sur. However, if you don't mind using something a little older, um, you can you can compromise with not being able to use the newest Mac OS operating system. But I do have a few suggestions. Uh, Macs that were produced in 2012 and 2013 um, can run up to macOS Catalina, which as of right now is the newest version of macOS uh, readily available, so there's no worry about app support in that regard. Pre-2012 Macs, though, are a little more complicated. Um, on one hand, they have the um, draw of being very inex inexpensive to buy, and sometimes even, even being priced under $150 or more, or even less on eBay. Uh, um, but other, on the other hand, uh, many of them are not upgradable past macOS High Sierra, which isn't all, all that old, and there was still plenty of apps that were in that operating system. To be more specific, uh, any Mac that was produced between 2009 and 2011 are able to run macOS High Sierra. Um, now, pre-2009 Macs um, really have it worse. Uh, since the ones produced in 2007 and 2008 can only run up to OS X El Capitan, which is older and it has very limited app support at this point. Even worse, many other Macs produced in 2008 and earlier have the potential of only being able to run up to OS X Lion. In 2006, Macs with 32-bit Intel Yona processors can only go up to Mac OS X uh, Snow Leopard. Uh, both Lion and Snow Leopard are long gone supported and none of them are able to run the newest versions of apps. Now, another question one might ask, uh, is it even worth using any PowerPC Mac as of this month? I mean, if there's something very specific you want to do with those Macs, then probably not, uh, especially since those PowerPC Macs are long unsupported, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, G5 Macs are among the fastest of all PowerPC Macs, especially with the Power Mac G5, um, whose newest model has a quad core processor. Um, it's upgradable to 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 megabyte graphics card. Now that's not to say that they are practical to use, since G5 Macs cannot run anything past Mac OS X Leopard. Um, same story with G4 Macs, which pretty much make up the bulk of Power PC Macs. Uh, the faster ones cannot run anything newer than Mac OS X Leopard, and the older, slower G4 Macs cannot run anything newer than Mac OS X Tiger. New World G3 Mac, and I'm going to emphasize that greatly, cannot run anything later than Mac OS X Tiger, and Old World G3 Macs cannot run anything newer than Mac OS X Jaguar 10.2. Um, that particular version has been long out of date, um, and of course, uh, any pre G3 PowerPC Mac cannot run anything past classic Mac OS. So in short, no, uh, you shouldn't really buy a PowerPC Mac in this day and age, even if they look cool than new Macs. But that's not to say that uh, some cool things can still do with PowerPC Max of 2020, um, like find newer versions of operating systems to run on it, like Linux, Moth OS, uh, you use the ever favored classic environment so you can run old apps, and even turn some of these PowerPC Max into some sort of media devices. And in addition, some of these PowerPC Max are very cheap to get on eBay. 
However, if you want a modern Mac that can run pretty much every new app and you want to have the ability to run very old Mac apps from long ago, then maybe get a slightly old Intel Mac and put it on an emulator like SheepShave on it. And before you ask, no, you shouldn't locate a 68K Mac. They are long gone supported. They can't want anything newer than classic Mac OS 8.1. And although a 68K Macs have fluctuating OS support, and the cheapest of them are likely going to be for parts of or repair on eBay. And it's certainly worth not worth even using. It's certainly worth even even using a power PC Mac to run any apps made for 68K, or more practically, an Intel Mac with an emulator cap capable of emulating a 68K Mac. So yeah, I did kind of go off a little tangent there. Oh, I'm just trying to make a do a service by suggesting what kind of Macs you should possibly get in 2020. I do own three Macs myself. Um, I have a late 2009 polycarbonate MacBook running macOS High Sierra. Um, 2005 iBook G4 that isn't working, but the last I checked, um, it was running Mac OS X Tiger, I think, and uh, a 2004 eMac running Mac OS X Tiger. The point being, I use every one of these Macs for com completely different purposes. I've tried using the eMac as a replacement for the computer I have right now because of this little noise can kind of view, but uh, it's, it's it, but it's, it's consistently slow. I mean, it's unsupported that I've only been able. To really use it for tinkering with, although it does make for a perfect machine to one classic apps on. I've used my poly polycarbonate MacBook for pretty much everything else you do use for any new computer for 2020 music making, web browsing, and so on. Now, again, I'm not very sure how long it will be okay to use my polycarbonate MacBook with the high CA warning, especially with Apple's transition to ARM processors, like I'm likely going to deprecate all support for even a newer Intel Macs. For right now, we can only guess. So anyway, uh, that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this on my channel, please subscribe. And I will talk. I will do some more videos later. Uh, goodbye.